Think joining me now is Ben Gunn, who spent more than 30 years in prison <coughs> for murder. I'm also joined tonight by Amanda Sanford from Action on Smoking and Health. It's good to have both in the program. Ben, you're a regular on the program these days. Um, so. Let's talk to you about your experiences and smoking. How big a part uh, of life, prison life was smoking and the ability to be able huge, to do it? Absolutely huge. I mean, if you didn't have tobacco, your first thought when you woke up was, where am I going to get a cigarette? Why? It's hugely addictive. Uh, and yet, it, it is good for stress. Prison is 99% boredom and stress. Uh, and, and smoking deals with both of those to some extent. I mean, Amanda, 80% of inmates smoke. Why mm -hmm. do you want to change that? Well, for the health reasons alone, I think it's, it's one very good reason. Um, it, you mustn't forget that smoking causes around 100,000 deaths in this country. Um, and in addition to the dreadful health consequences of smoking um, for those who acti actively smoke, of course, there's huge problems from passive smoking. Um, and I think the, the you know, smoking ban would clearly um, help to reduce that terrible toll of illness and death from, from smoking. Okay, well, we'll talk about passive smoking in a few minutes, but mm -hmm. Ben, what would happen if this ban was in place? I mean, paint a picture of life in prison without cigarettes. I haven't had a case. cigarette now for 10 minutes and I'm beginning to feel stressed. Uh, <laughs> so you can imagine people in prison uh, who smoke all of a sudden been told they can't smoke. They might have smoked for 20 or 30 years. Uh, all the smoking cessation aids and toys in a little box you can get from the NHS mean nothing. It's, it's a volatile situation. Prisons are always volatile. So what anyway. picture do you paint? A disruptive picture? A picture of rioting, you know, forcing smoking underground so it becomes... Oh, certainly it'll become contraband corruption. instantly. Uh, I was reading a, a tweet before I came in. Someone managed to smuggle in 12 and a half grams of tobacco into a prison, which is, mm. is nothing. Mm. A half ounce pouch. And he was the richest man in the prison. Uh, you know, and, and that amount of power, it, it alters the whole of the prisoner mm. culture, the whole of the power structure. <laughs> And if you take away tobacco as the default currency, drugs are going to be the default currency. Is well, it worth it, Amanda? I know you you want to talk about the health benefits, mm -hmm. and that's fair enough. But there's so much else to, to worry about. Are you not being a little naive, thinking a prison ban is good for inmates' health, when look, Ben here can tell you exactly what will happen if cigarettes are banned? Well, the fact is that the bans have worked very successfully in other countries, in, Which in the US, uh, the US and Canada, uh, New Zealand. Um, the and on the Isle of Man. And the Isle of Man, exactly. There's well, been tell, tell us what happens in the Isle of well, Man. Well, the Isle of Man, uh, they've had a, a ban on smoking there since 2007, when the ban on public places uh, was introduced and in this how's country. How's it going? As I understand it, quite well. well I don't think it's been it, a problem at all. Because in 2011, there was a report that said there was a flagrant. That, uh, fragrant abuse of that ban and, and the actual fact inmates were smoking right in the face of prison officers and it really undermined the prison officers uh, ability well, to be to you know administer punishment clearly there was there was an enforcement problem there and that need would need to be investigated um, but I think just the fact that there are so many people who smoke in prison is not a reason itself not to do anything on oh, the no, reverse no, no, I mean no, I think no. you know you have a huge problem there and of course um, you know uh, quite a high proportion of those smoking inmates will be um, uh, come from a disadvantaged background as well, where there's already a very high rate of smoking. Mm. So if you can get them to quit smoking while in prison, those you know, when they're released, uh, there's a good chance that they will re remain non-smokers. And it's good I, I, to, to push for healthier lives, isn't it? It's good uh, to come but, out but of prison. But there's pushing, and then there's just saying, we're taking it off you. Yeah, this, is, this is essentially force-feeding people their five a day. That's not, you know, you don't go to a shop and that happens to you, you make no, the but, choice. But they're not just taking away the cigarettes and not replacing it with anything else. The plan is, is to provide yeah. the help and the support and the then nicotine give people replacement. A choice exactly. And say, here we go. Or, yes, if they... this was a health and safety issue, and I, of course there are health benefits. You know, as a lifelong smoker, even I'll admit this. But it's the government is portraying this as a health and safety issue, and yet they're banning smoking in outside open air areas. It's not a health issue. But this the, is the a, problem a is if you, punitiveness issue. The problem is if you only had a, a partial ban, mm. um, this, if you still allow the smoking cigarettes to be in the prison, mm. then it's going to be okay, much more difficult to enforce. And just briefly, force are you comfortable with the idea of someone being forced to give up smoking? Because that's what's happening here. Well, they, they are. They, they, the cigarettes will be taken away from them, but they, you know, they will be given help and support are you uh, to overcome with that? the. From uh, I think so because it will have such significant health benefits in the long okay. term. Then Amanda. they should do it everywhere. <laughs> Why yes. not? Why not? I bet Amanda would be very happy about that. Amanda and Ben, thank you very much <laughs> for joining us tonight.